Hello and welcome everybody. In this video, we will review a new feature in Dynamics 365 supply chain management that allows us to create new transfer orders using mobile warehousing app. In order to create new transfer orders using warehousing app, we need to activate two features. The first one is called Create and Process Transfer Orders from a Warehousing App. That feature would allow us to create a mobile device menu item that will allow us to create new transfer orders. And in order for those transfer orders to actually show up in Dynamics 365, we need to activate another feature that is called Process Warehousing App Events. So Warehousing App Events allow the system to capture the transfer orders that we're creating on the Warehousing App and then transfer them into Dynamics 365. And there are several batch jobs that would allow us to facilitate that process. But we want not only to create a new transfer order, we would also like it to be automatically released to warehouse, and we would also like it to auto-confirm a shipment once the picking work is done. So in order for us to be able to do that, we will use a third feature that became available a bit earlier on that, that is called Confirm Outbound Shipments from Batch Job. As you can see here, all three features are enabled here. There is a nice guide on Microsoft Docs that describes the configuration process, and I will make sure to post a link to that guide in the description for this video. In order for us to be able to do the things that I will walk you through in the next part of this video, we have to configure mobile device menu items. We would also need to configure work templates and location directives. All those steps are described in this guide very thoroughly. So I will encourage you to just follow that guide to, con to complete those setups. I will skip those for the purposes of this video. So let's start the process. First, we need to open the warehousing app. I'm using a Windows 10 uh, client. So log in. Once you're logged in here, if we will navigate to inventory menu and I've added that new menu item that is called create TO, create transfer order. We're gonna click on that. So what we will need to do is enter a to warehouse. By default, the from warehouse will be the warehouse that you're currently logged into. I'm logged into warehouse 24, and I will create a transfer order to warehouse 61. Press enter. And next up, the system will ask us for the license plate because we have configured that process to be license plate guided. So here's what I have created here. This is an inventory adjustment journal that I, I posted. So you can see here that I have two items sitting in two different locations under two different license plates. So I have item A001 in location FL015 and FL016. So in total, we have 30 units of that item. And then item A002 sits in the same two locations under the same two license plates in the quantities of 30 and 40. Therefore, we have a quantity total quantity of 70. All right, so we have those two license plates, 015 and 016. So let's go back to our warehousing app. Let's type in 015, enter. And then the, the, the system asks us to enter another license plate. You don't have to do multiple license plates. And for the purposes of, of this video, we will. So we'll tap in 016 as a second license plate and press OK now. Once we have entered at least one license plate, we can complete an order. So we click on the menu right here and we can select complete order. So the transfer order 0036 is complete. What I notice here is there is another menu item that is called select transfer order. And I was trying to make it work. So basically it was asking me to select a transfer order and by entering that identifier. So what I've done is I created a new transfer order, just a blank order. I created a transfer order with some lines in it. And when I was entering the ID for that transfer order, I was always getting an error that the ID does not exist. So let's try it out. So here's a new transfer order right here. I'm gonna copy that number. You can see it's created. I tried with and without lines, but for some reason, every time I enter that number in here, the system complained that the transfer order such and such does not exist for warehouse 24, even though you can see that the from warehouse for that transfer order is warehouse 24. So I'm not sure if it's a bug or if it's an unfinished feature. It's still a feature in preview, so that it's not really surprising. So let's go back here and let's cancel out of it. So what happens now? So the, remember the order number 38, do we see it right away in our grid of, of transfer orders? So the answer is no. What we need to do here is we need to actually go and um, run a periodic job. In the guide, 
they configured a periodic job to be executed on a certain recurrence, but for the purposes of this video, I will execute it manually. So we will go into our warehouse management module and under periodic tasks, we have a new menu that is called process warehouse app events. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna execute it. So what happened here is if we go under inquiries and reports and we look at those warehousing app events, we see that we have two events here. One is create transfer order and we see the status for both license plates is complete. So we know that we have a transfer order 0036 created, right? But there is another event here that says complete transfer order and that sits in the queued stage, right? So that was surprising to me. So what I did, I just wanted to validate if that transfer order 36 exists and uh, let's, let's check it out. So here's our transfer order th 36. I'm going to click on it and here I see the quantities that match. We have 30 for item A001 and 70 for A002. So that makes sense. That's the total quantity of all the items that sit on those two license plates. But then I looked at the setup here, and in a guide it mentions that the, this outbound shipment policy, we configured it to be ship and release or something like this, right? But here it says, sits at, as none. So I was surprised to see that. And what I did then, I decided to execute the same job again without changing anything. So I'm gonna click on process warehousing app events. Again, you see that, that this job does not have any filters. I'm just gonna execute it. And once the system is done, when I go back to my warehousing app events, just to see if there are any queued events, I can see that all two events now are complete and therefore are gone. And then when I go back to my transfer order and just refresh it, you will see that my outbound shipment policy actually has changed from none to release and ship confirm, which is how I configured mobile device menu item to do that. So that seems strange to me. It looks like you had to execute the same job twice in order for the transfer order not only to be created, but also completed and populated with correct setup fields. So again, feature in preview, so maybe it will be addressed in the following, in the following releases. So at this point, we have a transfer order created, so we can complete it using standard processes that uh, exist in, in the organization. But what we, we want to do is we would like to automatically release that transfer order into warehouse. So, in order for us to be able to do that, we will use this existing menu item that is called automatic release of transfer orders. I'm gonna click on that and uh, I've defined some filters here. So first of all, it filters on a specific from warehouse. In this case, it's 24. It also filters on the transfer orders with a status of created. And also it's only considering the lines that have an outbound shipment policy equal to release and ship confirm, right? So those are the three filters. And again, those are very well described in the guide that I will post in the description for this video. So when we click OK, and we're gonna execute this job, what will happen here, the system will use the work templates and location directives that we have created, and it will, try, it will go and release to warehouse. It will also go and process the wave, and usually you have uh, some work created as the result but because I have configured my work template to auto process, it's gonna create and complete close that warehouse work right away. So let's check it out. Let's go back to our transfer order right here. Let's click on ship, look at load details, and you can see that the status of that load is loaded. And if we look at the work that was created, we see that two works were created, one for each license plate, and both of those are in the closed status. So we know that auto process feature actually worked. And then the last step of the entire process would be for us to auto confirm that shipment, right? So we have a shipment here, the status is loaded. So the, the last step that remains for us to be able to, to actually ship that transfer order is to confirm that shipment. And I will not do it from this menu item. Instead, I will use another periodic job, that new feature, so that would allow us to auto confirm shipments or transfer orders. So for this, I will navigate to my menu item right here, and I will click on process outbound shipments. This is a new feature that was released uh, sometime in uh, October, I believe. So this is a feature that allows us to confirm those loads. And again, I have, I have included some filters right here. Again, those are described in the guide. And in this case, uh, I had to, I'm only 
doing it for the orders, order lines that have this outbound shipment policy release and ship confirm. I'm also only doing it for the loads that have a status of loaded, and in our case, that, that was the case. And another thing that was described in that guide was actually filter it on the reference, and the reference that they wanted to filter it to was the transfer order issue. But when I used that filter, I did not get any results. So for some reason, that reference was actually not working. So in order for me to be able to complete that process, I had to remove that reference of the transfer order issue that is described in the guide. And once I did that, and click on OK, and click on OK again, the system now looks for all the lo loads that have a status loaded, and it's also looking for the load lines that have this outbound policy, and it's trying to confirm those shipments. So let's go back to our transfer order right here. So right now we see the, the, the status of that transfer order is created, but let's refresh it and we see that the transfer order has been shipped. If we look at the load details, we see that the load status is also been shipped. So we know that our confirmation of the shipment job executed successfully. So now we have basically shipped these items and of course, uh, the receiving part will be done in another warehouse. So just to summarize, this is a new feature that allows us to go and create transfer orders using the warehouse uh, warehousing app. I think it's another step because Microsoft recently introduced a feature that allows you to create new transfer orders from sales order lines, which was probably a feature that Microsoft was asked about a lot. So this feature allows us to create new transfer orders using warehousing app, and we enhance that process by automatically releasing that transfer order to the warehouse, completing that warehouse work automatically, and then automatically confirming the shipment for that transfer order basically making that order change to a status of shipped. That is all for now. I hope you find that video useful and until the next time and happy holidays.